One of the lawmakers calling for President Trump's impeachment is newly elected Democratic Congresswoman Carolyn Bordeaux. She represents Georgia's 7th District, and she joins me now from Washington. Hi. Good to be here. Representative Bordeaux. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so before we actually get into impeachment, I've heard from many people that they feel like the images that we repeatedly see on air um, don't adequately ref capture the terror that many people felt who were there in the Capitol. I'm wondering if you can tell us about what you experienced on Wednesday. Well, for me, it was not as bad as it was for some of my colleagues. Um, you know, I was able to go into lockdown. Um, but, uh, you know, so we were in a, a room with the lights off, sitting silently, um, you know, following what was going on on TV and on our phones. But there was a really chilling moment. I think the, the darkest moment was when uh, we heard that the president was refusing to deploy the National Guard, uh, even as, you know, the, the both the House and the Senate uh, were under attack. Um, so I, I don't know what else is needed to convey that. Uh, some of my colleagues were on the House floor, had to take cover, uh, were in rooms behind doors with people pounding on the doors, trying to break them down. Um, so I, you know, it, it was a, a very uh, sobering and very bad uh, thing that happened. And uh, we need some accountability for this. House Majority Whip James Clyburn told me that he has reason to believe that there were people who worked at the Capitol building who were complicit in helping rioters breach the halls of Congress. Do you agree? There is a lot of evidence that points in that direction, and I know that the, the House leadership and many others are looking into it, and I have called for the uh, GAO to do a thorough investigation to what happened with uh, the security breach uh, that happened on Wednesday. Well, at this point, President Trump has acknowledged that he will, in fact, be leaving office on January 20th. He says that he is focused on a smooth transition of power. Republican Senator Marco Rubio tweeted that the left is trying to, quote, use this terrible national, national tragedy to try and crush conservatives. What do you say in response? I would say there was a man with an AR-15 and flexicuffs uh, roaming the halls of the Capitol. There was a noose. Uh, out on the mall. And there needs to be some accountability for what happened here. Um, there are many Republicans uh, who are who realize that as well. And I would point out to the members of the Senate who seem to be uncertain about whether they should pursue impeachment, uncertain about whether they should pursue accountability, that that noose uh, was there for Vice President uh, Mike Pence. And so they are very much uh, under threat from this president and uh, from this mob that has talked about committing further violence across this week. Congresswoman, even if a House majority approves articles of impeachment, it is, of course, unlikely that a Senate trial would take place before Inauguration Day. As you heard, outgoing Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said that it could take place in the Senate as, as soon as Inauguration Day. And another one of my uh, another one of your colleagues, Representative Andy Levin, told me that even if President Trump has left office, he believes that he should still be impeached for what he believes is inciting the attack. Do you agree or worry? that impeachment after President Trump has left could distract from other priorities that the Biden-Harris ticket has, like coronavirus and economic recovery? I put a huge priority on addressing COVID and economic recovery, um, but I also put a huge priority on our democracy itself. And this president incited an insurrection, an attack on the U.S. Capitol. Um, he did that knowing full well that this was an armed mob, he, knowing full well uh, what they'd been talking about on social media, what they had been planning. Um, and then, when the Capitol was under attack, he refused to deploy the National Guard to defend it. If there is no accountability for this, it sets a terrible precedent going forward. Well, some Democrats are also discussing whether to include President Trump's apparent attempt to pressure Georgia's Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, as part of impeachment proceedings. I'm glad to have you here as a Georgia representative, um, because I think you have perhaps some particular thoughts on that phone call. 
Yes, I do. I was very glad to see that that was added to uh, the House impeachment uh, proceedings. Um, what happened was the president called Georgia's secretary of state, a Republican secretary of state who actually voted for President Trump, um, and tried to pressure him into cheating, to changing the results of the election in Georgia. And Raffsenberger said, you know, we have investigated, we have looked every under every possible rock for any possible problem, and there is absolutely nothing there. There is no reason. There's nothing we can do. It is the law. This is what the voters did. They voted for Biden in Georgia. And, um, you know, it's a real problem that the president can't accept that and has broken both state and federal law in, pres in pressing the uh, secretary of state to try to change the election results. Before we let you go, you were also the only Democratic House candidate to flip a reliably red Republican held seat in the 2020 elections. Democratic victories in the Senate runoffs and the presidential election would have been what we spoke about all of this week if the attack on the Capitol like hadn't happened. Um, I think that there's a lot of people who are now saying that Georgia is a solid battleground state, uh, but Republicans still hold majorities in the state House and Senate. What's next for Democrats in Georgia? So we clearly showed that Georgia is in play. And I think there's just a lot of work to be done uh, to get some things done for people. But in, for, in terms of the Democrats, uh, we just need to continue to go forward and build the coalition um, that we worked so hard on uh, for these past few years. Uh, it is a very diverse coalition cutting across many, many communities. My own district, 25% of the people in the district were born outside of this country. Um, so there are a lot of immigrants in this coalition. Um, and so just to reach out and to build it and do good things for people with it. Congresswoman Carolyn Bordeaux, thank you. Thanks so much.